Welcome back to another episode of the Grace and Andrew Yang Show. Unfortunately, Andrew is out hustling for money tonight, so he cannot be with us today. So instead, we have on our show a very special guest, Mr. Fat. Uh, Fat tax? How do you say your name, sir? T H A X. It's an old Scottish name. So you'd pronounce it uh, fax. Fax. That's okay. right. I'm going to call you fax, okay? Like a fax machine? If you want. Okay, fax. Um. Anyway, this is a fax Douglas of 92, Helen from the Windy City of Chicago, or as some might put it, a Chicago. Fax, I understand that you consider yourself a new age retro hippie. Is that true? Where did you read that? Uh, that's what you told uh, my reporters, and that's what they forwarded to me. Oh, they uh, they misreported you there. Well, um, I understand that you were born in the city of Chicago. Yes, that's right. Uh, where exactly in Chicago were you or uh, I should say, your birth mother gave birth to you. <laughs> birth murder? <laughs> birth mother. Oh, I, saw, I thought you said birth murder. I was thinking, what are you really trying to say there? Uh, my birth was definitely not a murder, as far as I know. Are you sure about that? Well, it depends who, you know, I might have blocked the way for some other poor soul. Unless I murdered a, a twin, I might have one of those little twins inside me that I don't know about. I mean, but you know, you... Yeah, it wasn't a birth murder. Okay, I just want to check because, you know, you kind of look like a zombie, so just want to make sure that you're completely 100% in the flesh. Uh, 110% of the flesh. Did you fail math class? I guarantee it. What? You failed math class, I assume. Um... Well, it wasn't so much that I failed it as it failed me. Oh, what a twist. Yeah. So anyway, what was it like growing up in Chicago during the 1930s? Did you ever cross paths with Al Capone? No, I did not. That was a little before my time, Shyla. If you'd done your research, you would have known that uh, I wasn't even alive in the 1930s. Uh, you might say that, and I understand that some people might be uh, comfortable saying that they're younger than they actually are, but to me, you definitely look like you were born in the 1930s, and we're going to leave it at that. So, how was the educational system like where you were at? Uh, it was barely passable. It, it was a way to uh, get out of the house. Would you say that you had a good childhood living out in Chicago during the Great Depression? Uh, I don't think it was so great. Everyone says the Great Depression. It was like nothing great about it. It was pretty terrible. And 
what was your childhood home like? Was it, you know, like an actual house or was it in the trailer park? Uh, no. It was, it, it was a real house. Okay. And growing up in the Midwest, did you grow on eating corn for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Well, Shyla May, it wasn't that Shyla, much different. Shyla Grace. Okay, not Shyla May, not Shyla Gray. Whatever you Shyla said. Shyla Mays. Completely Shyla. incorrect. I'm sorry, Charlemagne, but it, it was pretty much like your breakfast, except maybe without the grits. We, we didn't have any grits when I was growing up. But other than that, it was about the same. Facts, what the hell is a grit? I don't know a what grit? that means. Charlemagne, you say you're from the South and you don't know what grits are? I don't, because I'm a lady, okay? Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Next time you go home, ask them about grits and see what they tell you. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Now, we You might actually on. learn something for once. Uh, did you say some? Uh, no, of course not. Go right ahead. So, um, I want to know, from what I understand, it sounds like that you spent a great deal of your adult life living in a place called a Humboldt Park, if I'm mm -hmm. reading it correctly. That's right. How was it like living in there? Was it a humbling experience for you? Humbled it? No. It, it was pretty bad. There was a lot of crime. Hmm. Crime? Yes. Definitely. It was a high crime area. Like, were you able to sleep peacefully at night? Uh, not without a pillow over my head. And, you know, like somebody put in a uh, force on it, I assume? Uh, well, I, I usually had my faithful guard dog sleeping with me, so. It was that bad, huh? That's right. I didn't feel safe without my pillow and without my guard dog. Because I remember that you once told me that you uh, couldn't get any sleep out in Humboldt Park because you would hear gunshots ring out in the middle of the night. That's right, that's right. Now my parents tried to, uh, tried to tell me it was 4th of July every day that the neighborhood was so patriotic that they celebrated the 4th of July every day and every night. But eventually, I started to have my doubts about that. Yeah, facts. I I really think, and here's what I really think. I think they lied to you. Shyla, I I think I think you might be right about that. Now, Tax, I remember when you told me that there was one time when some. Dude almost broke into your home. Oh, that's Take right. Us back to those heroin moments. Oh yeah, it was pretty heroin. Uh when I, I saw a, a man who looked he he was wearing glasses. He looked uh perfectly normal standing near my door front door. And I, uh, I went inside. I think he was looking at a phone, his phone, while I was doing it. I went inside, 
took my time locking the door. And then as soon as I locked the door, I heard a huge thump against the door. This was a fairly large man. And, uh, About bigger than you? Yeah. Yeah. I weighed a little less then. So. And he, uh, I heard a huge thump. And then I heard a little tiny knock afterwards. But I think he was polite enough to knock on your door, right? Uh, yeah, but it wasn't real politeness. You can tell, Shiloh, when people are, are not being, they're only pretending to be polite. At that moment, when you knew that there was some stranger outside, knocking on your door uh, that might kick down your door at any time. Did you think to uh, call the police? No, I was just sorry that I hadn't uh, made out my will yet. I, I was sorry that I hadn't uh, put a close to my earthly affairs. You really thought that you were going to die? Yeah, I, who knows? All that was between me and death was was a wooden door. Uh, was there a lock on that door? Well, a wooden door, doors can't think for themselves, so it wasn't going to try to save me on its own. Yes, that's why people put locks on their doors. Well, this door was definitely locked. Yeah, that's how he couldn't get in. But he was hoping that I would, he was hoping that I would automatically open the door in answer to his polite little knock. Unfortunately, he should have done the polite little knock first and then whammed against the door. But even then, because living in Chicago, I, uh, it's a good idea not to open your door at night or basically any time until you know who it is exactly. And so I assume you didn't open the door for him. No, I didn't. See, some of us don't have doormen like you fancy New York reporters do. I'm not from New York, honey. I'm from Georgia. All right, you fancy Atlanta reporters. Atlanta is the last thing that I would call fancy, okay? <laughs> Just saying. Uh, speaking about regrettable decisions, now, as scary as that incident was, I remember facts when you told me that you got frisked on the subway. I did. Do you think that they were trying to steal something off you? I hope so, because why else would they do it? You know, they could be a, a nice officers in blue just doing their jobs. Oh, well, they might have been. I never thought of that. They might have been plain clothes police officers. And they were checking markets for rolling papers. I never thought of that. I guess I shouldn't have been terrified after all, but they didn't find my wallet anyway, because I always cover it with a couple of handkerchiefs. Do you think that that was what they were trying to steal? Shayla, that's a hard question. I'll have, to, I'll have to think about it. I'll circle back to you on that. Anyway, did you see any, like, security guards out on patrol when you got frisked by two thieves? Well, I made a mistake. I, uh, I didn't hang out with the main crowd of people. I went near the end of the platform. Uh, why was, was that? My, I guess because I didn't want to be around the other people. I wanted to be by myself. But I paid the price 
Say At my that name. moment, did you want to scream out, Here I am? Somebody help? No, I did not. All I did was kind of wriggle and try to get out from under the grip of the one who held me. And speaking about that, according to reports, you said that one of the thieves put his arms around you and held onto you uh, quite tightly while the other guy tried to pickpocket off of you. That's absolutely right. Given your body shape, it just does not make much sense to me how one guy was able to put his arms around you. Well, I didn't weigh as much then. I, I think one reason I gained some weight was so it would make it harder for people to do that. Okay, so you haven't had another incident like that since then? No, I haven't. See, so it worked. Thinking back to those moments, did you think that they maybe touched you inappropriately? Facts? Uh, I, I've refused to think about that. It's too horrible to think about. I'm sorry, dear. I thought that you wanted to share your experience about getting frisked. But you know what? I completely understand. Sure genius. It's too much. a trained psychiatrist. I can't, I can't really trust you. Yet. Some people have a hard time getting through trauma and don't want to get through that kind of trauma and relive those moments again. So let's talk more about Chicago. Facts, I remember okay. when you told me about this truly frightening incident where you were taking an innocent walk with your friend in a dark alley and some thug sprang out of nowhere and held you two up with a gun. At that uh, moment, what was running through your head? I'm sorry, I've got to cry here. This is so horrible to think about. Yes, yeah, Shyla, it's true. I, uh, I, uh, I, I was walking with my friend down the alley behind my house, and and the thug did come up and hold up, point a gun at us. Did your attacker tell you? I, did your attacker tell you that they had hurt you or shoot you if you tried to uh, run away? Well, the gun kind of said that for him. But I, I, uh, I abandoned my friend and walked away in disgust. And you were such an old man, Tax. I mean, you were already 70 years old. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to expect a frail old man to react the way that an adult might react under a hold-up situation. Uh, you were afraid, I assume. Well... You don't know that. Maybe I enjoyed the experience. Are you a masochist? Do you admit to No, me? but, you know, life can get pretty boring, so a little crime sort of livens things up a bit. The thing is, I really didn't like my friend that much. So I just sort of said, well, why'd you shoot him? Take him off my hands. I didn't actually say that, but, you know, hopefully he got the idea. And after that incident, I assume you two are not friends anymore. No, not really. Actually, he moved to Atlanta. Maybe you, maybe you know him. I know Atlanta is a pretty small town, so... And I assume that you did uh, get away eventually. 
Oh, oh yes, I did. I did. I think he held up my friend instead. And I assume he survived? Yeah, he did. I don't know how much money the guy got. Now, I remember when you told me that there was one time when you were just walking on the sidewalk to Chicago, which, uh, how, how are they, Tax? How what? How are the sidewalks in Chicago? Look. Oh, they're not too different from the sidewalks in Atlanta. So, a lot of trash? Yeah, a lot of trash, Shyla. Now, you tripped on a sidewalk. Yes, I did. There was a, a nail sticking up out of the sidewalk for some reason. And you fell pretty hard, I assume. I did. I, I, I fell and I, the breath was knocked out of me briefly and all these people ran up. And I think they were planning on uh, seeing what what I had in my pockets. But I managed to get up and they just said, oh, are you all right? But I could tell that uh, they weren't running up to see if I was all right. Harsh. Um... I don't know what that nail was doing there in the sidewalk. But it was there. So, now, I I didn't I didn't tell you I there I have one Humboldt Park story which I haven't told you yet. Go Shall ahead, I, go ahead. Uh, uh, well, I I uh, speaking of Al Capone and crime, uh, I was standing on the corner waiting for the bus, and uh, I heard a voice, a muffled voice, yelling, saying. Help! I'm I'm in the trunk. Help me! Get me out! But I couldn't tell what car it was coming from. Uh, what was that voice like? Was it like a man's voice or? Uh, it was a male voice. And um, so. did anybody do anything about that poor guy who was stuck in the trunk? No. For one thing, I wasn't even sure which car it came from. I had my suspicions about one car, but I couldn't be sure. But there were, you know, when you're in a high crime area, you don't go up and say, excuse me, sir, there's someone in your trunk yelling to get out. So I didn't do anything. So who knows what happened to that guy? Yeah, you probably have to watch a Martin Scorsese movie if you wanted to find out what happened to that guy. Uh, who the hell is that? Martin Scorsese? Yeah. I don't know. I think he owns the the. I think he owns the news channel you work for, Shyla Sue. Now, uh, do your research and then get I, back to me. First of all, me. I own my own show okay nobody tells me what to say uh anything that i do on the show i came up with and the only network that i could say you could say works with me okay i don't work for anybody is starry network so i have no idea who this shalom well, shalom guy is that you're talking about who, but who told you to say that your boss just told you to say you don't have a boss. I'm not going to fall for that. I don't. You Vogue? I huh? don't. Oh, you don't. Okay. Oh, all right. I'm convinced. Now, I understand, Tax, that when you um, were out in Chicago that you didn't really go out in the nightlife too much. Uh, no. No, I did not. 
Um, what did you do all these years? Uh, I don't really remember. But did you have a job, Rhonda? I must have, but I don't remember. When was the last time that you were employed? Fat. By employed, do you mean the last time I had a job? Uh, uh I, I, I can't remember. That was so long ago. But I must have had a job or else why would someone try to rob me? I mean, from the sounds of it, it sounds like a lot of people living in your district probably didn't have jobs. Probably. So, if people were still trying to steal from them, I assume that they just don't care. No, they're past caring at this point. And That's is that true. why you're glad that you're out of Chicago? Yes, I am. I am. I'm glad the sadness is over. And now you live in the middle of nowhere. Wait, I I have I have to sob a little bit. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, now, now I live. Well, I wouldn't call it the middle of nowhere, but it's definitely not somewhere. So maybe you're right. Ask you tax as a person who lived out in Chicago through such tragedies. Uh, what were the holidays like to you in Chicago? Yes. Uh. Like, did you well, go to any uh, festivals, or uh, you know, would it hire you to be Santa Claus at a mall? Uh. Yeah, they did. They did once. But they, they didn't call me back. Uh, what happened? I don't know. You'd have to ask the kids. But, you know... A lot they probably of had to fill out a questionnaire for the kids, and the kids weren't happy. Maybe they didn't get what they wanted for Christmas. But facts. I don't know. Dear... A lot of people have seen shots of you on your uh, Facebook profile where you look uh, like you were Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. So I think that anybody would be vying just to grab you to be a uh, part of their holiday spirit. Well, I guess looks aren't everything. And uh, speaking of that, what happened to your beard? Oh, I, I finally had to let the beard grow. And your hair. Grow. Are you on vacation? I could be, if you want. A uh, permanent vacation? Uh, could you say, didn't Al I remember you told me that you don't remember uh, when was the last time that you had a real job. Well, who wants to remember unpleasant things like that, you know? So it's not like, I just don't want to bring up bad memories, that's all. I always thought that the, I always thought the Shiloh May show was a positive, feel-good show. Uh, this is the Shiloh Grace show, not Shiloh Grace. Shiloh Grace, sorry, Shiloh Grace May. Okay. Shiloh May Grace? Sure. Okay, if you want, the, the May is silent, okay. But uh, then, okay. But I always thought the Shiloh show was a feel-good show. You don't want to talk about unpleasant things like work, so. Well, you know, if you talk about your experiences with work, uh, I think that our audience members might feel better about themselves, especially the ones well, who are not employed. I, I I did have a job in the, working in the emergency room in the hospital. I and, see uh, why you in quit. The, 
What? Oh, yeah. Well, you get a little tired of emergencies all the time. Because it sounds like I, from where you come from that you're facing tons of emergencies. In the emergency room? Yeah. I mean, like, if that, you know, if people are just robbing people on the streets and shooting the place up, then, <laughs> uh, yeah, no wonder that you're overflowing with people in the emergency room all the damn time. You know what was odd about working in the emergency room was the it was always very busy during a full moon. So that wasn't a myth. That was a real thing. It was always very busy during a full moon and also very quiet during, like, Christmas. No one wanted to come in at Christmas. So, tax... I'm sorry, facts. I understand that you sold uh, poetry for a number of years. I did. And that's literally how you made a living for 10 years. That is true. What was it like living under those conditions? Uh, it, it wasn't so bad. Because I imagine that you wouldn't have made much selling poetry. No, but, uh, if your identity is, uh, is, uh, tied up with being a poet, being to make, uh, a living, no matter how scanty from your poetry, is a positive thing. Is that why you were living in the likes of Humboldt Park? That's true. That's absolutely true. I, I also had a, a weird roommate that uh, I, I, I basically lived in this place for free, practically. Do you want to know how? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I had a bizarre roommate that would get very mad at me when I paid the rent, but was nice when I didn't pay the rent for reasons I don't understand. So if I paid him the rent or, God forbid, paid in advance, a few months, he'd get very upset and yell at me. But if I didn't pay the rent for a few months, he'd be nice. So I eventually learned to just not bother paying the rent. That definitely sounds like friends with benefits. Yeah, that was definitely a benefit. He was crazy, but yeah, craziness has its Perks, I Maybe guess. he's crazy about you, facts. Maybe. If he did, I don't wonder what his problem was. I don't know. I don't know. So, all that aside, we understand that you, at 90 years old, are out living out of Chicago, right? That's right. You're no longer going back to Chicago. No. You will never, never, ever set foot in that city ever again. Not if I can help it. Are you happy with your life right now at 92? Hold on. Well, Shyla Dean, it is, uh, I, I think happiness uh, lives within. Do you still sell poetry? Yes, I do. Because my viewers would love to see what you do. Oh, here's my book. It's a book of my poems. Oh, I, I couldn't quite see it. Could you show it again? 
This is a documentary about me. Okay, and your documentary is called Tax? It's called Tax. Okay. Tax. Um, where can somebody who might be interested in your story get, you know, access to the tapes? Well, you know, the, the, the documentary is on Vimeo, so you can watch it there. Uh, do they just Google facts? Douglas. Uh, okay, so your name. Yeah. And your poetry book? Uh. Like, uh, I mean, uh, that that looks like a whole lot of nothing, but you can. Uh, it's it, it's the cover is supposed to look like a notebook. Oh, okay, okay. And there, the actual different. I see you trying to be here. Uh, it's facts. But anyway, where can somebody who might be interested in your poetry get access to it? Oh, uh, I guess they could, uh, they could write me. Are you on social media? Uh, not really. Uh... Maybe they could write me courtesy of you. Okay, I, I think I can they make could it just work. Write, they could just write, you know, Shyla Dean show. You uh, know, right, that right, show, Douglas, not Dean. Kara, Kara, Kara Gina, Gina May, Jyla May, well, your name. They could Shia stay. Lu that, Lu Rice. Lulu? Shyla, Dax Douglas Kara, Shyla Lou Grace at, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, or wherever you're from. And then, then I'll just get back to him. How about this? For all y'all who want to contact a fax machine, just type your requests in the comment section of the show and he'll see your messages. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I guess I guess that's why you're the professional. Right. Anyway, we're running out of time on the show, but I would just like to thank uh, Fax Machine for coming on to this show and giving us such an enlightening perspective on what it was like living out in Horrorville, Chicago. Yeah, I was glad to do it, Shyla June. I hope it's a warning to people. If you live in the middle of nowhere, stay there. Yes, I agree, and I second that. Now, to all of y'all, my fans, Andrew's fans, stay tuned for another episode of Grace and Andrew Yang Show next time, and goodbye.